Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14. We are continuing our preview series of Southeastern Conference basketball teams for the 2022-23 season. Today, Blake, we get to Bruce Pearl's Auburn Tigers, who were just about flawless for about three months. It kind of fell apart at the end. Auburn, however, has reloaded through the transfer portal after losing two bigs to the NBA and looks poised to be very competitive and perhaps even competing for a league title again here this season. Yeah, it's pretty much your expectation now under Bruce Pearl is that uh, they're going to have a chance to do that pretty much every season. Um, and yeah, I mean, coming off of a lot of positive momentum for most of last season, like you said, up until the way it finished. But, you know, I think it's just it's it is fascinating still to look at it from a, just an overall state of the program standpoint and to think where they are now. Um, as you know, at this point, it feels like Pearl's been there for 20 years. Right. Like, But when you really mm -hmm. think about it, like this is only going to be his ninth season there. And I know that's you're like, well, nine, that's a lot. But still, it's it's one of those things you just think about where the program was. When he took over, what, seven, eight years ago um, to where it is now. And it's just it's pretty remarkable to kind of see the trajectory. And, yeah, I know you can point at the disappointment of the NCAA tournament last season. But, you know, when you consider that they've won 25 or more games now for the last five seasons, that's a pretty incredible feat um, for this Auburn program. And I think they have another chance to match that 25 win mark this season, although with a different team. Um, you talk about the bigs, uh, big bigs that left for the NBA in terms of Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler. But, you know, they got some other big bigs uh, coming in as well that will be able to match them uh, height wise uh, and maybe not to, to Kessler's extent. But um, I think that's going to be kind of the fun part of figuring out this Auburn team is you kind of know what you're getting in the backcourt in terms of the guys that are returning because you saw them play a lot last year. But uh the curiosity comes with the the intrigue and the potential that they have in the front court uh, with this this new group they're going to bring in there. Yeah, I did standings for the last five seasons in the SEC, and, and Auburn over that period is third, which would have just been astonishing if you'd said that to us a decade ago, that anyone could get Auburn to that level of consistency in that last five years. Auburn has been to three NCAA tournaments, would have been to a fourth. The pandemic season, Auburn went 12 and six, 25 and six overall, tied for second in the SEC. And of course, there was no NCAA tournament played. The one year that Auburn was off was two seasons ago. The Tigers went seven and 11 and 13 and 14 overall. That was the Sharif Cooper year. Uh, the kind of the bizarre in between where Alan, Alan Flanagan had a nice year down the stretch for them. Of course, Flanagan got hurt last year. We'll get to that in a minute. But really, Auburn should have four NCAA tournaments in the last five years, presuming the tournament had been played in the pandemic. But it's just remarkable to see what Bruce Pearl has gotten him to. And transfers are a heavy focus of this program and a big driver of its success. But, Blake... And, and and having, well, even with what I'm about to say, a lot of these players in here were transfers. But you look down Auburn's roster, and you got six guys who played pretty decent roles last year, seven if you want to include Chris Moore, uh, who averaged over seven minutes a game. But you've got Zepp Jasper, KD Johnson, Wendell Green Jr. back in your backcourt. you got Alan Flanagan back on a wing, hopefully healthier. And you got Jalen Williams and Dylan Cardwell in the front court. I thought that both those guys did a pretty underrated job for Auburn spelling Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler, and in particular Cardwell, who was a pretty good shot blocker, uh, probably the best shot blocker in the league off the bench. So Auburn, in a year where, well, really in an era where a lot of teams don't have a lot of the same phases returning, that's a pretty decent start start for the Tigers there in terms of guys coming back. Well, last season they were the second least experienced team in the league, um, mm -hmm. and you saw kind of what they were able to still accomplish with that, right? 
Um, I think LSU was the one, yeah, Ken Palm was, was the least experienced in terms of just, you know, how he structures that, that rating and everything. But, um, you know, that's, that's a pretty interesting thing to think about is that they, they did lack a lot of experience last year in terms of, you know, the amount those guys had played together and, and all that, and just some of the, the younger guys that stepped in. But now, you know, you've got some guys coming back that played and, you know, you can kind of, I mean, like I said, you, you know what to expect with their backcourt. Like the faces are there that you've seen and you know who's going to play. Um, that's just, you know, that's what they're, the way their roster is built, whether it's Katie Johnson, Wendell Green, Jeff Jasper, Alan Flanagan, these are guys, you know, you know, they, they played big roles on this team and they're going to do the same thing in this season. And so I think when you can kind of lean on that, and again, you, your expectation is that that group, especially that group of four, they're going to be better this year that that's your expectation um, because we'll kind of talk individually about some of them that were, you know, inconsistency was there. Uh, of course, Flanagan clearly coming off an injury and just never looked the same as he did the year before. So those kind of things factored into it, but now you've got a fresh start, but all these guys have been in Bruce Pearl system, you know, for a season or more now. And I think there's an understanding there of, of kind of what they, what they want and what they expect especially at their guard positions in a Bruce Pearl system. And so I think that's a, that's a good starting point for them. Um, you know, and, and like I said, I know there were, there's a lot of frustration from Auburn fans last year with their guard play and, and the ups and downs that, that was kind of something that, that happened a bit, you know, when they did start to kind of um, have that stretch where they were not playing as well, but you know, can you, you turn that into something a bit more this season? I think that's also one of the, the biggest questions uh, with this team. So, Well, the other question I have is what do they do at the point? How do they divide roles and time between Zepp Jasper and Wendell Green Jr.? Green had a really high assist rate. Uh, also had a lot of turnovers and at critical times. Shot selection was questionable. Jasper was more under control, not as dynamic. Um I'll have to look this up as we're doing this. I, I think Jasper ended up taking more a share of, a minute, of minutes proportionally as the Tigers went down the stretch. And that was the thing that we said, hey, this this might be Auburn's undoing. Um, actually, maybe not as much as I thought in terms of how they did the timeshare. Jasper played 17 minutes in that loss to Miami that ended the season, and Green played – my internet browser is frozen. But anyway, po point being, they've got a choice to make. Jasper is listed as the starter, I think, for this year. Um, Green, I think, had a pretty good overseas tour. I think they went to Israel, perhaps. What do you make of that whole situation at point guard between those two and, and how that should be split? I, mean, I think it's a great problem to have is when you can go to either one of those guys because – like you said, they're different players, or at least they were kind of different in terms of their production last year. You know, Jasper just he started a lot of games. And I think something the the stat I pulled up here, Chris, I was trying to look this this number, but we talk about turnovers and those kind of things because you know, that was an issue at times. Um, you know, when you look at some other guys maybe that handled the ball, but like Jeb Zeb Jasper had 17 turnovers in SEC play. 17. That's it. You know, yeah, and I mean that's that's pretty good. I don't care who you are. Um, so I think that's something too. Now again, did he play as many minutes sometimes as as the the other guys were were kind of bouncing him off of? Maybe not, but still, I don't care. I mean, that's he played still played a lot of minutes, right? I'm looking down. Um, SEC, excuse me, not in just SEC games. I'm sorry. He only had fifteen. Excuse me, fifteen turnovers in SEC play because I was counting the two um, in the NCAA tournament. So. In SEC against SEC competition, only had 15 turnovers. So um, that's something too. And when you look at the minutes that he played, I think in SEC play, aside from the games he did not play in, which was Georgia and Arkansas, he played at least 15 minutes in every SEC game. So you're talking about a guy who's started that many games, has played that many minutes in the league, proved last year that he was, you know, great option in terms of not turning the ball over. And so you bring him back. Like you said, Green is someone we talked about a lot last year in terms of just what he can bring to the table. Um, I mean, a lot of us, you know, a big assist guy, good passer. I kind of said, I think I've said this last year, but I feel like he's like he's like that prototypical Bruce Pearl 
type point guard. Um, yeah. And I think that's kind of the, the best way to describe green. And you think too, is something that was pointed out um, by others. And I think we talked about this last year. <laughs> like he rebounded pretty well too. So yeah, um, yeah, he did. And, and, I mean, and a, a big steel guy. Um, yeah. So, well, and let, let me intersect one thing here. I'm, I'm looking at turnover rate and I know that these are, I guess, estimators based on possessions. Uh, you may know a little more about that than me. Turnover rate, Wendell Green, 17.9%. Jasper, 15.3%. It, it, the gap there was not as wide as I would yeah. have thought. Now, I think what you said was probably, I think it got worse in conference play. Um, but, but Green is Green is a make-stuff-happen guy, including getting rebounds. Jasper's more of your traditional, you know, at least by the stat line, don't, don't screw it up kind of guy, I guess, is a good way to put it. Uh, they're, they're very different players, and and, yeah. and maybe game by game, you know, one is more useful than another based on what's going on. But it just is – it's it's a very interesting dynamic between those two. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think, too, it's the – you know, I think it's kind of the the situation where you can still play each one off of the other as well. You know, and I don't know how many times maybe, you know, in terms of just what, kind of what the rotation looks like this season. But um, you've got two surefire ball handlers here. And that's that's a good thing to have, I think, in a on a Bruce Pearl team that we know is going to kind of push the pace and um, play up tempo. They're still going to do that. Like, that's not going to change. So, yeah, I mean, you've got two guys that will handle the ball a lot. And it's just a matter of, again, seeing kind of how each can develop their game. I think it'll be interesting to see if Jasper can be, you know, add more of that scoring punch this year. Um, both of them are going to defend. Uh, I don't think there's there's any doubt about that, specifically Jasper. Like I said, you looked at it. Um, I think the stat, too, to kind of add to the turnovers, Blue Ribbon had this stat, um, 25 turnovers in 736 minutes. So that's just a, that's a remarkable thing to think about. And, you know, having the best assist to turnover ratio and those kind of things. So I, you know, again, I, I take your pick here. I think that both have their strengths and I think they will, they will be able to add, you know, to what's around them and, and they'll be able to put them in a position to have a lot of success. I think at that point guard spot. Now they got a couple other guys in the backcourt. I'm, I'm going to count Flanagan in sort of his own category, but they got Katie Johnson, the transfer from Georgia, who is a lot like green and that there is no um off switch and then they got chance westry who's a top 40 recruit um a lot of a lot of guard depth here between those four guys yeah i mean look katie johnson it's funny because i i used the same comparison with severe wheeler when we did our kentucky preview i said how does katie johnson play he plays like a bulldog right it's just it's like these guys were in the the perfect spots, weren't they? At Georgia, it's both Severe Wheeler and Katie Johnson because they they play like bulldogs. Like that's just kind of how they play, just in the terms of the style. But look, I, I I'm not saying anything anyone doesn't know about how Katie Johnson. Like he was streaky, right? Like that's a good way to put it. Like it was up and down. The consistency was not necessarily there. And I know that's something this year. If we're talking about each individual player, what's the biggest thing you want to see from? Some of these guys with him, I think it's just you want to see that consistency. And I think that's it, right? I mean, that's to me, he's he's one of the most important pieces to seeing what Auburn can become this season. Um, because I mean, Chris, we talked about some of those games. I can remember us doing reaction videos and looking back at some of those games and wondering, you know, whether it was the game or, you know, plays a lot of minutes, doesn't score or scores a couple points, just is not hitting shots. But then you turn around and it's like, well, then he comes back and scores a lot of points here, hits a lot of shots, um, you know, does a lot of things well, gets a lot of steals. So I think that's just clearly something that they're going to need from him this season. I think it just it's going to be more consistency. Um, we talk, by the way, just to group this entire Auburn guard group into the mix here, shot selection, um, oh, I think, yeah. will be very important. I got some stuff on that. That was that was not the best, especially when they started having those issues. And quite frankly, even when they weren't, like there were still some things shot selection wise. And again, I'm not putting all this on Katie Johnson. I'm saying this is the entire kind of group here because um, we we said it a lot last season. Um, but I think that's something that's going to be important because I've always said, like, even in a Bruce Pearl system, you have your freedom. You, you do not lack freedom 
in a Bruce Pearl offense. And I think that's one of the most appealing parts of it if you're a player. But it can also be something that um, a little too much freedom sometimes with for the wrong scenario, um, time and situation that can really yeah. put you in a, a tough spot. And I think we saw that a bit last year with Auburn. But um, yeah, I mean, Katie Johnson is going to start, going to play a lot of minutes. Just, I said, maybe less, uh, a little streaky in terms of the, the production and some of that. And um, I think that will be key. Talk about Westry, someone else. I think he'll he'll be in the mix. I think just by default. I think he's a he's got good size. What six six? I think um, just kind of again one of those t- sort of versatile guards. I think they can use in multiple ways. Um, and the, the key thing, Chris, all these guys have in common that we talked about. And then I'll give you a stat on their, their defense in just a minute. But I think these are all like these are all guys who are going to defend and they're going to force steals. And that's going to make things easier on offense too. So that's a good thing to have in your backcourt. Uh, the Bruce Pearl here has compiled. Well, here is my big concern about Auburn. I, I'm I'm a big fan of the stat effective field goal percentage. What that is is that's taking your field goal percentage and it's weighting it for the three. Wendell Green, forty four percent. KG Johnson, forty five. Flanagan, forty three. Jasper, 44. Now, I think average is around 48. So that's four below average shooters that you've got there. Now, maybe maybe you improve that with shot selection this year. And, and look, to be fair, some of those guys made up for it by getting you extra possessions, whether that's Wendell Green grabbing a rebound, whether it's steals, which Green and, and Katie Johnson in particular had a lot of. But it was that thing we talked about all year. It's like you, Auburn sort of thrives based on the freedom that Bruce Pearl gives those guys. But then we said, does that end up biting them at the end? It did. And I don't know how you go from playing one way all year to, to trying to play a different way. And, and I think that's also a challenge maybe they have this year is, is how does Auburn or how does Bruce Pearl really govern over that situation in terms of, of trying to reduce the things that gave them the issues a year ago w- without taking away the, I guess, the spunk and the spontan- spontaneity or wh- however you want to describe it, uh, that, that kind of at the same time makes his guys go. That 2018-19 team, I think, kind of spoiled people because yeah. what what did that team have, Chris? They had all the freedom in the world, but my goodness, if Bryce Har- or Bryce Brown or um, I guess you could have bought them, right? Bryce Harper, um, if we wanted to, to add the baseball <laughs> metaphor. Jared Harper and right. Bryce Brown, um, who, like who came down and like we talked about, like if Jared Harper just stopped and pulled from 30, like it was fine because you know what? He, he hit some of those and the thing is, though, and this is what I looked up when I was putting my notes together. You know, I think we've always kind of, especially when Auburn was hitting that groove, several it really started to kind of turn the program around, right? Um, they had guys who were knocking down threes. They were shooting a good percentage. I think it was like three years in a row there. But it was that team that shot 38%, 38.1% from three, finished top around top 20 nationally, the final four team. Um, you looked at the freedom that team had and their ability to knock down shots, especially from the three point line. And I think that just opened up a lot of, okay, this is just going to be the way it is moving forward. Right. You're just going to bring in guys who can do the exact same thing. But like we've talked about, and we said this last year, that was a, that was a special group. And yeah, since then, I think the thing is, um, you know, I put these, I looked at the numbers, 269th and three point percentage last year. 31.8%, 31.8%, 225th, 32.6% the year before, 301st the year before that, 30.6%. But, you know, aside from that, that 2021 team that, you know, had a losing record, we talked about all the challenges that team had in terms of just personnel and availability and those kind of things. They still won a lot of games despite not being yeah. that, that, you know, just knocked down three point shooting team. But I think this is one of those teams where I feel like they they need that element, right? Like they need to be able to knock down those shots from outside. And I think it's going to be kind of fascinating to see how they improve in in those areas specifically. Because if you look at the team overall, um, you think about how interesting it was last year. Because we knew 
everything was going through Jabari Smith, right? Like everything on their offense mm-hmm. was going through Jabari Smith or Walker Kessler in some way, shape, or form. And I think now, you know, we'll talk about the big guys in a second, but I mean, you know, what Smith hits, I think he's almost 83s last year. You know, Green is the leading returner. He hit 59. Um, Johnson hit 45. Um, so, you know, but I think the actual percentages, right? Like those are the things you got to see get better because, you know, Katie Johnson shot 29% from three last year. Wendell Green shot 31.7%. Um, Jasper shot 37%, but I don't, I don't think he took a ton of threes. Maybe I'm just remembering this wrong. Um, but so I think that's another kind of interesting aspect in terms of the breakdown offensively, especially from their backcourt. So, yeah, Jasper took 71 threes. That's more than I would have thought to hit 26 of them. Now, Now, one thing that we talked about with Tennessee, we talked about that team really just the guys that are going to have the ball late in games really shoot free throws well. Green shoots 84%. Jasper, 81 Katie Johnson, a respectable 72 Yeah. Um, so that that does help, I think, a good bit. Um, Flanagan at 65. And, and that, that brings me to what I wanted to talk about next. Alan Flanagan. That kid had, what was it, an Achilles injury? Yep. In August last year, came back really, I just don't think was the same player. And and we remember Alan Flanagan from the year before when, when Auburn really didn't have well, had a mediocre team. That was a seven and eleven SEC team. And and Flanagan, not Flanagan, excuse me. Yes, Flanagan. I don't know where my head is today. <laughs> Alan Flanagan was a real part of that. I remember watching those games late in the year and how he just kind of took the games over at times, really was sort of the playmaker that that Auburn needed. I think Sharif Cooper got hurt was the issue. And um, I'm looking at it. Last game in the SEC tournament, Auburn's last game of that year, he scores 22 points in a win. Scores 28, excuse me, 23 against Tennessee February the 27th. 23 against Kentucky, February 13th. Had a run of, let's see, I don't know, about the last dozen games Auburn played, he scored double digits. Uh, The exception was Alabama and Florida games that year. Um, Then you go to last year. He scores double figures, I think, six times all year. And four or five times. Four of those, he had exactly ten. Now, some of that was situational. Auburn had other guys who could make plays. It had two guys in the paint to get points. It had all the guards who took a lot of shots. And so it was a different role for him. Auburn needed him to do some things two years ago that it did not need from him last year. But the point is, you just look at the box scores. He was never the same guy. But we have seen that guy, and when he is healthy and playing to his potential, he is a potential all-conference caliber player. I don't know what they get out of him this year. He he has got to be. I don't know if he's the biggest wild card in the league. We've not done our research on everybody yet, and so I hate to to throw that out there because I may come to someone who's bigger, but I think he is going to be on that list of guys with a very wide range of performance. Um, And if Auburn gets Alan Flanagan near the top of his game, look out. Yeah, no, he's the key. I mean, look, I, I'm not saying he's gonna he's got to score 20 points a game or anything, but I think he's got to return to being a a top scorer. Um, I just think that's the case. And again, you're, you're assuming everyone else is going to continue to prove their improve their game scoring wise too. But I just think him, you know, that's the question: is can he return to being you know a top scorer on this team? And I think he's mentioned. I mean. We've seen it before. You know, we we know the potential is there for him to do that. It's just it was very clear, and we talked about it last year that he was just not the same type of player, and the injury clearly had a lot to do with that. Um, so I think, you know, having this off season now to kind of work himself back into form, and that's what you know Bruce Pearl and all these other coaches have talked about. That's the value too of these foreign trips is you get guys like that who, you know, maybe were bouncing back last season, were never kind of fully what they wanted to be. You get your summer workouts, all that, but then you get this foreign trip to kind of go over and 
and be able to be like, all right, where, where is my game at right now against other people? Not just the people I see every day in practice, but I think that's something too, that gotta be a good gauge for him as they head into the season here in about a month. So, um, you know, I, I think you're right. I mean, like you said, it may not be, you know, we, we may not put him at the number one spot in terms of a wild card in the SEC and, and how that affects, you know, the SEC title race. But he's right up there because, you know, if he's back to being Alan Flanagan that we talked about a couple of years ago, um, they're, they're going to be really good. I think they're going to be good regardless. But I think if he can add that dynamic to being back to being a consistent score for them, and I'm talking, 10 to 15 points a game or something like that. Um, I think that's just, that would be such a huge part of them being able to, to continue to do what they've been doing. And, and like I said, too, I mean, look, and we're talking about a different position here, but Chris, that, that production from Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler has got to be replaced in a variety of different ways. Yeah. And I think that's where a guy like Flanagan, you know, that, that point production has got to be made up somewhere. And I think the, you know, the next two guys we're going to talk about will help there, but, that's where, again, having a boost from someone like Flanagan would just be significant. He's going to help on the defensive end of the floor, too. Um, and, yeah, I just think offensively, that's that's one where you would love to see him get back to, to where he was. And I think having a full offseason healthy, um, I think there's certainly the, the chance that he'll be able to do that. Well, you tell me if I'm exaggerating. I think a February-March of 2021 Alan Flanagan is, is maybe worth a couple of seed lines in the NCAA tournament to Auburn. I mean, on this team. Yeah. I think the way this roster is constructed, I don't think there's any doubt because that's the thing, right? Is if you, it's interesting because you, you look at kind of this team and the way it's built, you know, Katie Johnson green, those guys averaged around 12 points a game last year. But beyond that, right? I mean, Flanagan, six. Jalen Williams had around six, too. Jasper, around five. That's what I talked about with Jasper. I think it'll be important for him to add some, a few more points a game. Um, but if you can take Flanagan from averaging six points a game in what was clearly kind of a lost season, it felt like for him, yet he still played a lot of minutes. If you can flip that from six to to 12, I mean, that's a that's a significant difference. And again, you've got to make up um what about 20 28 29 points a game that was left out there by by smith and kessler in particular so uh, i'm i don't think that's exaggerating at all i think that he's the biggest key i think to their success because you almost feel like you kind of know what you're getting with everybody else and if if he can be what you think he can be then yeah i mean that's it's a huge boost so well, the front court, Auburn had the best tandem of bigs probably in the country a year ago. Um, Gonzaga might contest that perhaps, but um, they did it again in the transfer portal. Johnny Broom from Moorhead State, who was, I think, third in the country in blocked shots. Uh, as I mentioned, Dylan Cardwell behind him is is a very underrated backup center. Jalen Williams, as you mentioned, has done a lot. Averaged 14 minutes a game a year ago. Um, let's talk about those guys. What, what kind of player is Broom in the SEC, you think? Yeah, I mean, I think the luxury of him is, you know, you bring in Janiah Broom here, who's 6'10", 235. Um, he was a defensive player of the year in the OVC. I think he finished top four nationally in block shots, double doubles, a variety of different things. Um, but again, that's the OVC, right? And I think that's that's always a question you have. But I think when you can just watching him play, um, I, I hope this doesn't become a situation. I don't. I think it's understandable from the outside. Some people may do this, but I don't think Auburn fans will do this. But I hope it's not a situation where we're looking up every time and comparing, you know. Broom and, and Traore here to Smith and Kessler all the time. Because I think when you look at the size, you've got two guys here that are 6'10, 225 plus, and being able to support, you know, two 6'10 guys on the floor at the same time, which Auburn did that with 6'10 and what, 7'1 last year. Um, it's just a nice luxury to have. But I think with Broom, I, I go back to the defense, right? Because here's the thing, too. Here's an interesting stat for you. 
Uh, we talked about the tor- turnovers. I mean, forcing turnovers is going to be a key to their success. It always is, I think, with with Bruce Pearl teams. But, I mean, Auburn, top 30 the past six seasons in block percentage. Um, and I think that's an interesting part of that, too, because that's a key to success because, you know, of why. Because when you're blocking shots, you're protecting the rim better, but you're also blocking shots, giving your offense a chance to get out in transition, perhaps a little bit quicker, um, you know, with better numbers advantage on your side. And I think that's where like broom will be able to do that. Um, you know, you know what he had blocked 131 shots last year or something like that. I think he was top five in the country in that category. So I think that's the big thing is knowing that, you know, you had someone like Kessler who we talked about just could seemingly block shots at will last year, not saying they're exact same player, but this is a guy that blocked a bunch of shots in the OVC. And I still think he's going to block a bunch of shots, no matter if you're playing the OVC or the SEC, you know, maybe it's not 131, but I think that's the biggest thing you're going to get from him is, you know, he's just a proven producer, right? Like he's just a guy who has proven that he can produce game after game. And that consistency, I think is really what you like to see with him coming in. Um, you know, start, he started what 61 games, I think at this point in his career, now he comes in, um, you know, with that much experience under his belt. And I just, I think he's going to fit in right away. I think he's going to be just fine kind of sliding in where they need him to as the primary rim protector shot blocker. And Oh, by the way, he'll also help him out offensively. Now he's not going to be, you know, he's not going to be stepping out and shooting threes. Let's not get carried away here. He might shoot some, but you know, Chris, at this point in his career, he's over five from three. So, um, I don't think that can be your expectation either in terms of maybe how your big guys stretched the floor a little bit last year. Um, you know, that's going to be a little bit different dynamic here, I think with, with broom. So I think you're muted. I am. Thank you for that. Oreo. <laughs> um, Oreo. <laughs> let's wrap Always up any loose ends. It, it is that, that dog and I own the world's loudest dog. <laughs> And he's not just loud, he's frequent. But anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> Auburn, a frequent returnee to the NCAA tournament. There you go. How's that segue? Uh, should be again this year. What loose ends do we have to wrap up on Auburn here? Well, I mean, I think we do need to talk about Traore here a bit um, because I think, you know, that's an important piece of the puzzle. I mean, you're talking about a, a five star guy who it seems like we've yeah. said this a lot, Chris, originally committed to LSU. Um, LSU fans watching this are thinking, man, you know, we've already talked about, we've done what this is our fourth team preview we've done. We've already talked about two players who were originally committed to LSU, but have now found a spot elsewhere in the SEC. Um, yeah, I mean, look, he, like I said, 6'10 guy, 225 pounds. Um, I think Bruce Pearl, one of the, I was reading something on him not long ago here. It was, um, may have said at some point, I don't know, this off season, but you know, not the same player as Jabari Smith, but he's bigger. He's more athletic, right? Maybe than that. So that's something to kind of think about. That's kind of what Bruce Pearl, that was the quote he had on it. So uh, again, I'm not saying your expectation should be the same as Jabari Smith, but this is a guy that can make shots. I mean, he's going to, you know, come in, I think, and, and be able to help them and he has to help them. Right. That's what he said. I mean, it scoring wise, we talk about, I, I think this team defensively could be just tremendous. Like I think when you look at it from that yeah. standpoint, um, you know, when you just look at kind of the, we talked about the steals and stuff with the guards, but I mean, I think this is a guy with it's, I just, I think being able to knock down some shots, that's going to be a big part of it. He will be someone that can step out and, and make some shots. I think some jump shots for them. And so having a big guy that can do that, we've, we've said, I mean, how valuable that is in this, this day and age specifically. Um, so I think he'll be kind of a, a pretty effective scorer for them. And, you know, he'll also help them defensively because of his size and his length and kind of what he can do. Um, you know, just kind of a long guy. Um, and you know, he'll give him a boost on defense. He'll make shots. And I think that's, you know, that's nice to have as someone who will really, I think, help them even as a freshman on both sides of the floor. And, um, you know, he'll, <laughs> you'd be more surprised than not if he's not an all sec freshman, uh, just based on the skill level that's there. And I'm kind of excited to see how he plays off of these guards and, and kind of, you know, what he can do to 
to help that guard group too, because I think it's going to be kind of fun to probably watch him run the floor. And um, as always, seems like that's always the case in a Bruce Pearl system. Yeah. Watching the big guys run the floor is just sometimes it's just it's so fun, and it's, it's weird to say, but um, it's just kind of how they play offense. So yeah, I think you know him and Broom playing off of each other and having the luxury, like I said earlier, of of, of playing two guys that are six ten it's just a nice thing to have because it's going to help you on both ends of the floor, rebounding, defending, making those, you know, easy shots at the basket. And with, with Treor, like I said, being able to, to step out and make some jump shots. So that's another big piece of the puzzle here. Um, you know, beyond that, like I said, this is a team that, you know, the bench depth, I think is going to be nice to have here. Jalen Williams, look, he could, Jalen Williams could be the starter, right? Like he can start games for him. Um, if not, he's going to add that, that nice bench step. Um, and I think adding him to the mix along with those two big guys we just talked about, that's nice to have in the front court. Dylan Cardwell, Chris, I mean, this is another guy like, player. He will defend and he will, he will, you know, get some rebounds. He'll probably block some shots. Like this is a team. That's another big team. Like they're, you know, they, they've got some, some good size and length here. And I think that's, going to be a real asset for this Auburn team. And that's why I think offensively, when you look at this team, um, I think their defense will be able to significantly help their offense because there's just a lot to like, I think, about looking at the depth here. And, you know, um, Aking Ball is still there, another shot blocker, just depending on how he continues to develop. Uh, but you talked about, you know, this is a team that realistically, like we said, 9, 10 deep maybe, you wouldn't be surprised. By that, I'm um, not saying that's going to be the full rotation for the entire season, but um, I like the pieces here. It's just I think seeing how the pieces play together is probably, you know, one of the things. And like you mentioned, this is a team that specifically when you look at individual guys like an Alan Flanagan, um, you know, a Katie Johnson, it's seeing how these guys develop their game beyond what we saw last season and more consistency, I think, is the big thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's talent wise, it's all there. It's just, you know, I think it's still a question of, you know, we're not we're not living in the past here, but it's you're di- you're a different team without Jabari Smith and Walker Kessler. But I think Bruce Pearl's done a pretty good job of bringing in some guys in Broom, um, Traore, those guys that will be able to step in and, and do a lot of things that will give their front court just as much of a a threat um, as it provided last year. So. The more I talk through this team, the more I like it. And there's two or three things that are behind that. I remember a year ago, we talked through Auburn. And to me, Auburn was a a big mystery because you didn't know about the Flanagan injury, how that would affect things. We had really not seen Wendell Green play in the SEC yet, so we didn't know how that would go. We had seen Walker Kessler play. And that was a kid in high school that wanted to be a a three-point shooting champion, had very pedestrian numbers at North Carolina. We did not know what he would be. Instead, he gets to Auburn, and Bruce Pearl gets him buying in, and he turns into probably the best shot blocker in the country and and a guy that you could get some, some pretty easy buckets from underneath. You saw Jabari Smith sort of become a, a Kevin Durant type of player in a lot of ways and then you look at this team okay Auburn brings in again like Kessler a transfer big man this one not as highly regarded out of high school but more accomplished coming in again we think third in the country last year in block shots and then average what 16 and 10 I think at at Moorhead Uh, almost 17 and 11 actually so you you got that parallel you've got Traore, who it's tempting to compare him to Jabari Smith just because he's is at Auburn and he's a scorer who can step out and shoot it. I have not seen him play to know if that's true. But he did get 20 points twice, I think, in the Israel tour, according to Blue Ribbon. He's a natural so you see, man. I'm just yeah. – like just to add that, like he is just – when you watch him play, like he's just – I really like his game. Like he said, I, I don't want to – I hate being the comparison playing that game, but like he's he's gonna be really good. 
So. Yeah. So, I mean, you've seen him. I haven't, but so you, you've got that. You look on the other side, you've got a lot of the backcourt left, good and bad, but being a year older, you wouldn't think they get worse. Maybe they learned from some mistakes last year. I mean, Auburn had aspirations to win the whole thing. Auburn was number one part of the year. That's where Auburn's eyes were set. You would think those same kids know the the taste of disappointment and that Miami loss. They want to get better. You would think they know what they've got to do to get better. And then you've got Flanagan. We talked about scoring, Blake. Flanagan averaged, I looked it up, 14.3 two years ago. And it was more the second half of the season, I think. So you've got guys there. I mean, my goodness. You talked about the defense and the and the block shot ability. Auburn's got that. Auburn's also got guys that can score. Uh, Wendell Green averaged 12 a game last year. Broom, like I said, almost 17. Katie Johnson, 12 a game last year. Flanagan, if you get him back to where he was. Um, you know, 14 a game two years ago. Traore can can score for them. And you've got you've got a half dozen guys, Blake, that could average double figures. Now, all of them probably want that there's not a lot of basketballs or not enough basketballs to go around. And maybe that's the challenge that this team has. But on paper, you look at it, it it's got the keys to defense because Auburn plays hard. It gets steals. It will get blocked shots. A ton of guys who can score and a shooting efficiency may be the question. Um, and Auburn's best three point shooter last year, percentage wise, was Jasper, which you talked about. You didn't remember him shooting a lot of threes. So their volume guys were not their percentage guys. And, and that's their biggest issue as I see it. But look, if, if we look up in, in March or April and Auburn's in the final four, based on the talent this team's got, it shouldn't be a shock. Yeah, and I think Traor is going to be able to to help them making shots from outside too. Like I said, I mean, we saw that some of the I think some of the highlights they showed of the the Israel trip. He, you know, he can knock down some shots from outside. That will help him there too. But I always have this interesting thing that I look at with teams. Right? Is how many guys on the roster conceivably? And we know coaches say this a lot. Um, but how many guys on the roster conceivably could lead them in scoring? A lot. I mean, you've you've got. Probably four or five. It, it guys, could be Flanagan. Right? It could be Johnson. It could be Traore. It could be Broom. I mean, could be um, Wendell Green. Maybe if you know, could be Wendell Green. At that point. Um, so I think. I, you I know, think if it's Wendell Green, you 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 probably don't want that. But anyway. But I think again that that's what I think I kind of look at here with this team, and 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 I think to in a certain sense that could be a good thing and a bad thing, right? Because maybe you don't know exactly you, you don't come out and feel like, all right, we've got that 20 point per game score, which is not always necessary by the way. Um, but I think it's, it's a good thing with this team because there are a lot of options here to work with. You know, there are going to be guys that are just going to maybe even play beyond what we expect them to. Um, and even though we have high expectations for a lot of these guys. So I I'm with you. I, I like the makeup of the roster. I also like the fact that I think there can be a little bit of a chip on the shoulder of this guard group coming back how much they heard last year about, you know, they were the reason and, and all this, that Auburn did not make it to where they wanted to make it. Um, and I think there there's a motivating aspect to that, I mean, especially with a guy like Katie Johnson, Chris. I don't know Katie Johnson personally, but he seems like the kind of guy that he will have a chip on his shoulder. He always plays with it. And, you know, I think this guard group coming out with something to prove, that could also be kind of a fun dynamic as well with this team. You're muted again. The Oreo mute has continued. Yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you again, Oreo. He's <laughs> he's going off again about God knows what. But he's excited for the Auburn Tigers, man. I, you know, I, 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 that's that's gotta be it. You just sometimes I ignore what's right in front of me. But in any case, uh, we are previewing or have previewed every single SEC team for the coming basketball season. So be sure to subscribe to get all those, either the ones that we've had that we've done already or the ones to come. Thank you to our sponsor, Stakes. You can see our offer for them and Manscaped on our ticker. Take advantage of that. Uh, have some fun with Stakes especially. That is a fun app for making predictions on things, and it doesn't cost you anything. Um, so help out those who help us. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.
with more SEC basketball previews.